Hello everyone, it's the end of the year, which means why not do something really exciting, like look at a spreadsheet tutorial. Woohoo! As you may know, last year I constructed a, a spreadsheet for 2015, and I decided to share it with everybody, and a number of you downloaded it for some reason, so hooray! I decided that for 2016 I could make a series of improvements and make some things easier for people, and also track way more stuff. So let's go and take a look at it right now. Below you will notice a link where you can download the spreadsheet, which will take you to this page. So you can download both the Excel spreadsheet and the ODS file, which you would use in Google Docs, as a zip file, just by hitting download. Or you can download the files individually just by clicking on the links there. And then you can open the document in Excel, or you can open it in Google Docs. So for Google Docs, all you need to do is take your ODS file, and you can bring it into Chrome, and just drop it into there, and it'll upload, and you can access it. Uh, you can also click on New, and go File Upload, and then navigate to where the spreadsheet is. All right, so on to the spreadsheet. You will notice there are a few differences between the Excel document and the Google Sheets document. I've tried to make everything compatible, and work in both programs, but there are a few differences. Most of the improvements are actually changes to the formulas and equations to help make this stuff more accurate, and we also corrected a few problems from the 2015 spreadsheet. But what you'll notice right away is that I've locked this first column so that the title of the book is always uh, visible, so you can go and look at the other pieces of information without losing the title that you're looking at. I found I often didn't know what book I was referring to when I couldn't when I couldn't see this information. Um, I've moved things like country into the third column. That just felt more convenient. I've also changed the star ratings. I didn't have half star ratings before, and one of the new things we have is now full half star ratings, because I found some books were really good and some books were, well, not quite good enough for it to be three stars. There's also a category, which I'm calling Kaching LB, which is simply um, another part of the survey, so you can say, was the book new, was the book used, was it a gift, was it free, was it from the library, was it an ARC, or LFL, which would be a little free library. So if you live in a city that is utilizing a little free library program, you can um, indicate that. And this is just a way of telling where your books came from. Also, under series, not too much of a big change here, but we have added a standalone category so that you can, you can indicate if it was part of a series or not. I've also added a days read column, so from the start date to the finish date, it'll now count the number of days that it took you to read one particular book. And then just for kicks, I put a total days, but this is, this is not out of the year. This will be the total number of days recorded from these dates, but it'll also do a quick average. Last year we introduced purchases, but there have been a number of changes to that as well. I've added this new thing up here, which will summarize the information from purchases very, very quickly. So it'll look at the total number of books you've actually read, so you can see how much are you buying that you're actually reading. And I quickly added this little histogram of cost, just to give you a quick breakdown of are you buying really cheap books, are you buying a lot of really cheap books, or are you buying at more expensive prices. Again, you'll see the Kaching LB. Uh, over here, which will then, you can then specify where the book came from, and also a did you or did you not read the book. So there are a few options in this dropdown, but you only need to select read. I've also created a did not finish part of the survey. Ideally, we don't want to track this much information, but this is kind of a nice thing to refer to on your own. It will not influence the charts or graphs, except for the one that says pages, um, because I thought, well, if you've read so many pages in a book, you could count that towards your total page number for the year. So simply entering how many pages you read out of that book will be t totaled in a different part of the sheet. All right, now on to the main part, which is the summary, which is where most of the improvements and changes have been made. Before, the summary was its own yearly thing, and then there was a separate sheet for a monthly summary. But we've changed that, so now everything is on one sheet. So you have a start date and an end date. And what that means you can do is you can A, change the dates here, and get all the information for a particular date range. So you can set it for a month, you can set it for a year, you can set it for multiple years, and you can just keep going. So if you want to do a six month analysis of your reading, just set the dates and you'll be ready to go. So that's the biggest improvement. The one thing about this is that not everything will calculate that way. In these squares where I've put a little blue, these are the fields that you'll need to change manually. So right now this one is set to go for 2016. But if you want to set these monthly charts for 2017, all you need to do is change this number here to 2017 
and that number to 2017. The only exception will be February. Because 2016 is a leap year, you will need to make sure that it says February 28th, 2017. And um, the same for uh, this one over here. It'll be February 28th, 2017. Otherwise, it won't calculate properly. Yeah. So anywhere you see this little blue icon, that's where you'll need to change the date in the cells immediately below them. But luckily, everything else is controllable from these two cells right here. One of the big additions is I've added more categories for genres, so you can add your own far beyond the original 10. And then I've also left two slots blank for type, and I'll show you where to control those in a second. Also, there's a DNF category showing you how many books you did not finish, as well as the number of pages you didn't finish, plus a total count that will add the pages read of books you completed, the pages that you did not finish. It'll just put them together so you can see how many pages you're getting. Most everything else is the same as before. Um, we still have these things here, which will calculate your reading goals. Are you making them? as well as how many books you have left on your TBR. Okay, now charts. Charts are mostly the same. Oh, for some reason that's showing. That go away. Please go away. Charts are mostly the same. I've just done a little bit of tweaking so that categories show up um, a little bit better, as well as adding a few more additional ones. I'll let you sort through those. One thing that'll show up in Google Sheets but not in Excel is this world map that will show you which countries you're reading from. It will tabulate some of these into a little color chart. Um, doesn't show up in Excel. That didn't come across. Sorry, guys. But as before, these will auto-update based on information you enter in the survey. So now on to categories where you customize your options. The line down here is as far as each of these customizable categories will go. So for gender, it'll go down to... whoops. So for gender, it'll go down to 11. For genre, you can put in whatever you want. For book type, you can actually enter two additional slots because I couldn't think of what else there would be. And for countries, we have, I think, the traditional 25. It's a good idea to start the spreadsheet from as scratch as possible, and making changes later down the road might hurt you. So for example, if there's another country called Mooville, which is not a real country, obviously. So Mooville will be listed as an option under the book survey under country. Now, this is a problem if you try to take Mooville and move it up to, say, where Brazil is. If you do that, it will throw off some of the charts and some of the numbers. So it's better to start this thing from scratch and then add more as it goes on. So if there's countries you know you're going to be reading from, delete all these before you enter any information under the book survey and things will be fine. You can start from scratch that way. The only thing you probably shouldn't change is the one that says graphic novel, just because there's some other special formulas later on that are influenced by it, so deleting them might not be a good idea. As long as you leave this one at the front, it'll be okay. There's also an additional tab called Adjustment, which is just a little place where I change the number of graphic novels that I read. Graphic novels right now are counted as a physical object, and so under that count, it will read as one number, but I also read a few digital comics this year and I didn't have time to really rework everything to, to process all that. So all I have to do is enter the number of digital comics I read at any point in the year and it will adjust these two charts to show the proper number of physical versus digital if you read digital comics. If you don't read digital comics, the charts like this in the charts tab will be perfectly fine. It's only because I care too much about accuracy and not enough about actually doing the work to make this thing right. Another thing I'm doing is a daily reading form, which is um, a way to track reading sprints and stuff like that. So I created this one in Google uh, Forms, which is really easy to do. All you need to do is make sure that this is the, uh, the layout and order of it. So you have a part of the survey that says, hey, what was the date? When did, time did you start? What time did you stop? Now keep in mind these are both military time. So it'll be if 9 in the morning, it's 0900, and if it's uh, in the afternoon, say 1 o'clock, it'll be 1300 hours instead of 1. Don't know how to change that. Sorry. And then you can enter how many pages you read. And this will put everything into a chart right here. And it'll just keep tabulating information. So whatever you put into here and whenever you hit submit, it'll always add one line. So you can track all of your reading sprints and all of your pages that way. I'm not sure how great this will be. This is the experimental part of the spreadsheet we're going into. And this is a separate spreadsheet by itself. And then the great thing is, is that we can copy and paste this into another document, which I'm working on right now, which will calculate a lot of information about how much you're reading. What was your longest reading session? What was your shortest reading session? Right now, that's a little bit complicated on my end, so I don't have that ready. But in the future, it'll be there. 
um, if you want, you can actually make your own one of these, make a bookmark. And anytime you do a sprint, all you have to do is go to the bookmark, fill in these questions, hit submit, and it'll save it in this document for a later time. The great thing is that this can also be set up as a bookmark in a web browser on a mobile device. So in uh, Chrome, all I have to do is hit the little button, the settings button on the side, and I can go down to add to home screen. And I can make my daily reading form, and I can make my daily reading form for 2016, hit add, and it will put the bookmark right there. So now whenever I need to do a reading sprint, I can quickly hop to it, enter the information, hit submit, and the information is recorded. Yeah. And again, it's just as easy. I can enter the date. I can say, well, on the 29th of December, I read from 4.15 in the morning to 6.15 in the morning, and somehow I managed to read 105 pages and then hit submit. And there we go. And if you do another reading sprint on the same day, it's really easy. You just go back to the form, enter the information, and there you go. So yeah, sorry I don't have that spreadsheet ready, but stuff will be coming. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. I hope that helps you guys to record your own statistics for reading if you are interested in that kind of thing. And if you already have your own spreadsheets and just have some ideas you want to take from this, feel free to grab it because I just think it's a good idea to put this out there for everybody so that people can just have something to work with. All right, that's it. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.